everyone, it's Brennan. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. Today I have some self-help, self-development book recommendations. So I really wanted to do this video because I feel like self-help type books really got me into reading. Got me back into reading, I should say. I read some in middle school and a little in high school and then through college. I would read like one Game of Thrones book over each summer. And when I started my first full-time career job late in 2017, I was commuting a lot. So I downloaded Audible and I just really dove into the self-help books. I had a new job. I was making a decent amount of money. I had just graduated college and I was really looking into what I wanted to do with myself. And so I went on quite the self-development journey and I still listen to a lot of, I like to say self-development for these books. So I'm going to start this video with one of the very first audiobooks I ever listened to. And that was Own the Day, Own Your Life by Aubrey Marcus. So this is more a fitness and health type book. And Aubrey Marcus, he was the CEO of On It, which is like a fitness and supplement company. I've never used any of his supplements or anything like that, but I did really enjoy his book. So this book is set up in designing your perfect day and ideally making each day of your life the best, most productive day that it can be. And I like this book because it goes into sleeping habits and dietary habits and being outdoors and the benefits of sunlight. He goes into Wim Hof, Wim Hof's breathing work, which was my first like introduction to it. And this book has nice recipes in it, which I really enjoyed. So I listened to the audiobook. And then whenever he was talking about the recipes, I was like, I think I kind of want to have this in the um, physical form also. And like, he goes into like little exercise recommendations. Aubrey Marcus talks about so much in here. He talks about music and instruments and and eating weird foods. And I really enjoyed this and it really started the ball rolling in my self-development journey. The next author I wanna talk about is Ryan Holiday. And I actually was introduced to Ryan Holiday on Aubrey Marcus's podcast when he was about to release one of his newest books. And this I have here is his Daily Stoic. And I talked about this in my December wrap up, I guess it was, because this is a book that you read every day. There's a little passage from the Stoics, which were like Greek and Roman, not really philosophers. I guess you could call them philosophers, but some of them were just normal people and just their musings and their teachings. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not a philosopher and I've never studied philosophy, but I feel like the premise of Stoicism is just being in control of your own emotions and understanding that you can only control yourself and how you react to things and you have no control over the world or other people or even your own body sometimes. I really like this and then I also listened to all three of Ryan Holiday. He probably has more than three but last year I listened to three of Ryan Holiday's books and I really like the audio because he reads them but the first one I read was Ego is the Enemy and then I read The Obstacle is the Way, and then I read his newer book, which I think came out last year, Stillness is the Key. And I love his books because he uses real life historical figures as examples for some of his, I guess I'll say teachings, but I just think I get a lot of benefit from hearing about good things that other people did and good methods of living your life from other people and from ways of philosophy. Do those sentences even make sense? I hope so. But I really like Ryan Holiday's books and I feel like they help me with emotional intelligence and with accepting life as it is. Is that dark? Ryan Holiday. The next book I want to talk about is Atomic Habits by James Clear. This book is so good and I let this still impact my weekly life because James Clear has a weekly newsletter that he sends out. It's the 321 newsletter. It's like three quotes from him, like three musings kind of from him, two quotes from other people and one question. And they come out every Thursday. I'll link them below because I get a lot of benefit from them. And this is just about being productive, which I need constant 
reassurance about <laughs> and building good habits breaking bad habits or just not letting bad habits happen and this has a lot of like um i don't want to say instruction i guess it is it it has some instructions so the he has his laws of building good habits so make it obvious make it attractive really enjoyed this book and i would definitely reread this but another really good self-development recommendation and then going off building good habits i would also recommend deep work by cal newport this book i really need to give a reread because when i read it i had just started like you know my salaried eight to four job and i wasn't doing a lot of creative work and this book goes into more of really utilizing your creative brain the best way possible. You know, you can't just like wait around for the time that you're like at your 100%. You have to constantly work on things you want to achieve, making it a habit. Now that I am in grad school and not working a regular job, I need more of that because it talks a lot about utilizing your time and working deeply deep work and i need that right now with my thesis but i really enjoyed this a lot it was another book that talks a lot about habit and i really like that topic the next book i have to recommend is dave ramsey's this one is the complete guide to money his total money makeover I have also, but this is the only one that I read. And this is another book that I read when I started my first job out of college because I just didn't, not that I didn't think about money that much, but I didn't have as much money to manage and to make work for myself. So this was great. Even though both of my parents are in business, I myself have never done a lot with money and I'm the kind of person who has to go looking for topics they want to talk about. I can't have topics forced on me. So I read a Dave Ramsey book. I do not follow everything that Dave Ramsey says to do, but it was really beneficial to me to just read a book about money. Like I still have a credit card. Dave is very much against credit cards, but I'm a responsible adult and I do well managing a credit card. But this also talks about investing and saving and paying off debt and really beneficial book. And this book started me, I don't wanna say on a journey to minimalism, but it introduced me because I'm obviously not a minimalist here, but this introduced me to the topic of minimalism, which led me to read this next book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. By Marie Kondo. So before I read that Dave Ramsey book, it was like the idea never occurred to me to just stop buying things. And that sounds really ridiculous, but like, hear me out. I was 22, my brain was still developing, and I just needed new concepts introduced to me. So I read Marie Kondo's book. Do I live in a minimalist space? No, I don't. Do I have only things that I need? No. I don't. But this book inspired me to be more cognizant of the things that I own, take control over the things that I need and want to bring into my life, into my space. This is a constant battle for me. In Marie Kondo's book, it's kind of set up to where you do the KonMari method once and then you're done because then you're not bringing things into your life that don't have a space. I do not practice that by the book, but it was good for me to just have that put into my head so that I could, you know, keep it on the back burner whenever I am buying things. And I get really, really motivated probably every couple months to go through my stuff, donate and sell things that I don't need anymore. And I really enjoyed that about this book. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was The Minimalist, Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus. I've not read any of their books. I know they write books, but I listen to their podcasts a lot and I've watched their two documentaries that are out now on Netflix. So I feel like I get the gist of their books, but they are another self-development top platform that I've really enjoyed over the last couple years. They talk about the stuff, the decluttering and the minimizing your stuff, but they talk a lot about other topics too, like health and relationships and things that I just really enjoy hearing about. So I would recommend their podcast, their YouTube channel, and their documentaries. So those are my self-help recommendations. These are books that I have gotten benefit from and that have stuck with me 
over the years. All these books I've read over a year ago or more, and they are ones that I still think about and still kind of keep in my mind kind of as, I don't want to say the backbone of my, of my life because that's very dramatic, but I just keep them in mind. And like I said, a few of these, like with uh, Ryan Holiday, I read him most days. James Clear, I do his weekly newsletter. And The Minimalist, I keep up with their podcast. And I have just gotten a lot of benefit from these authors, from these books. So let me know in a comment down below what some of your favorite self-development books are. I'm very open to new recommendations always. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next one.